Is dysthymia a high-functioning depression? What's dysthymic disorder anyway? That's what I'm going to talk about in this video today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I publish weekly videos about mental health education and self-improvement. If you don't want to miss one, click subscribe as well as notification. This video is based on a few viewer questions combined into one. But here's one of the questions from Miss Media Chick, and I'm going to read part of it to you. Dr. Tracy Marks, would you consider doing a video about dysthymia? I'm a 47 year old and I've been dealing with it since I was about 14. I started having some major depressive symptoms in my 20s as well, but I never understood what was going on. I'm a lighthearted, creative person who enjoys connecting with people emotionally, but so much of my life has been overridden by my dysthymia, making everything dull and gray and draining away my desire to engage in everything. I was finally diagnosed when I was 30 and have been on meds since and spent 12 years with an amazing psychotherapist who's helped me arrive where I am today. Take note of this. My father has narcissistic personality disorder and I'm sure I don't have to explain to you what hell he made out of my childhood. After tons of hard work, I'm actually in quite a mentally and emotionally healthy place. I feel amazing. But dysthymia? It's a constant battle trying to figure out the right medication with major depressive episodes interrupting it. There's a little bit more to this, but I just wanted to give you a feel of what she experiences. So thank you, Miss Media Chick, for the question. High functioning depression is a term people will use to note that someone's depression is not getting in the way of their day-to-day -day functioning. Perhaps they're able to still go to work or school, take care of their family. And this is in contrast to a low functioning depressed person who may not be able to get out of bed or may not even be bathing or failing classes because they just can't pull it together enough to do these things. So high functioning is really more of a descript descriptive term and not really an official diagnosis. But the reason it can be associated with dysthymia is because dysthymia is like having a depression, but the symptoms are not as severe and they persist for a minimum of two years. So it's kind of like having a low hanging cloud over you that makes it hard for you to feel enjoyment and satisfaction with your life. You may even find yourself feeling more negative than other people around you and you just don't feel happy. One of the things that I ask patients when I'm doing an evaluation is, when was the last time you felt good? People who have major depression and have episodes that come and go, they may say, oh, it was about three years ago, or even if they've had depression a long time, they can usually point back to a time in their life when they didn't feel depressed, even if it was years ago. Whereas the person with dysthymia will usually say, I don't ever remember feeling good, or I've always felt this way it's hard for them to recognize a period of time where they didn't feel bad. And that's because the symptoms that they experience are chronic and long lasting. But here's an important point though. In 2013, we had a new edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual and we changed the name from Dysthymic Disorder to Persistent Depressive Disorder. The name is a little misleading though because the symptoms are not as severe as with major depression. So in some ways it really is like a higher functioning depression. Let's take a quick look at the criteria and I'm going to read this from the manual. So for persistent depressive disorder, you need a depressed mood for most of the day for more days than not for at least two years. And in children though, in adolescence, the mood can be irritable and not depressed and last for a year instead of two years. While depressed, you must have two or more of the following. Poor appetite or overeating, insomnia or hypersomnia, low energy or fatigue, low self-esteem, poor concentration or difficulty making decisions, and feelings of hopelessness. One of the big differences here between this and a major depressive episode is you need two of the six things instead of five of nine things with major depression. And I have a video defining and talking about major depression. I'll put a link in the corner for it. Another big thing that's missing with persistent depressive disorder as, a, as compared to major depressive disorder is the lack of suicidal thinking that you can see with major depression. The next requirements are during the two year period or one year for children and adolescents is that you can't go more than two months without any symptoms. 
there's some other criteria like you can't have uh, you couldn't have had a manic episode or there can't be a medical diagnosis or medical illness that could account for these symptoms. A person can have a major depressive episode that occurs on top of the persistent depressive episode. And what that would look like is a person who's chronically depressed and they may be managing okay, but they're generally not happy. And then they slip into a deeper depression. Now they have more of the symptoms that you see with a major depressive episode. Um, these would be things like feeling worthless or hopeless or even uh, feeling suicidal. They may even have significant weight loss or weight gain. With persistent depressive disorder or dysthymia, you may see you may have changes in your appetite, but it may not translate to a change in your weight. If you get a major depression on top of your persistent depressive disorder, we call it a double depression. When is it likely for you to develop a persistent um, depressive disorder? It's something that can build up uh, early, that can start as early as childhood, all the way up until early adulthood. A risk factor for it developing in childhood is losing a parent or parental separation. Miss Media Chick speaks to this in her question when she says that her father was narcissistic. Although he may have been physically present, I would argue that if he was narcissistic and lacked empathy, which can come with narcissistic personality disorder, that lack of empathy creates an emotional disconnect that can be experienced by a child as a separation of sorts. It's like you can just never really attach. So this may have set up Miss Media Chick to develop a chronic depressive disorder beginning in her adolescent years. Now. This is all hypothetical because I don't really know Miss Media Chick or her father, but this is just a possible explanation. How do you help dysthymia? Sometimes psychotherapy alone can treat your depression. However, often a combination of medication and therapy is best. If you become seriously depressed um, and get the double depression, it's probably best to consider medication to knock out the major depression and then continue your work with the dysthymia with the things that you learn in therapy. That's it. Thanks for watching. Leave me a question uh, if you have one or a comment about your experiences. And like the video if you like it. See you next time.